The most, who's the most important person in a storyteller's life? Does anybody know? Does anybody know who's the most important person in a storyteller's life? The audience. Wrong. The, the audience. Exactly. Yes, and you're the audience, and thank you so much for coming. I've been just stuck on the highway for at least 45 minutes. When I started here, I thought I had plenty of time. I started out, came down King Edward, and there was a huge fire truck making a whole lot of noise. And then two ambulances came. And guess where the cars were traveling with me? What were they doing? They were just, huh? they were waiting. They were just sitting there, like me, saying, I've got places to go, people to see, things to do. But nobody was moving. You know why? Because when a fire truck comes through, all the cars must stop. Okay? They have to stop because a fire truck is needed. And then you, we went a little bit further, and two ambulances were coming. And did you know that when you learn how to drive, if you see an ambulance coming, what do you do? Stop. You go to the side of the road and you stop. Oh, also there's a police car. And that's what came next. <laughs> you were right. The police came to join the ambulances and the fire truck, maybe another fire truck came in. I don't know, but I was sure glad to get out of that. Or situation. Not a, or not a police car. A police car. I know I don't think there was a tow truck involved, but <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> so, my name is Louise. I'm very happy to be here. I'm very happy to have little children and older children with you because you know what? You might never think about this all the time, but your mom and your dad were children. Yeah. And what did they love? Stories. Stories. And did you know, did you know this, that every one of us, you, 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 all of us, are a story. We are story in the making, right? Every one of us have story. So, my story is, and I'm gonna stick to it, is that I was one of the luckiest kids in the world. You know why? My grandma was a very wonderful storyteller and she had friends who were also storytellers. And I got to stay at my grandma's place amongst a whole bunch of her friends that would come over and visit every day and they would drink tea and they would tell stories. It's a very important thing in anybody's life. Like, I would love to know the story about how this girl got this beautiful dress, the beautiful head, headpiece, everything. There's a story behind that, okay? When you first, when you got that purse, when you got that, is it a backpack? There's something, there's a little story about that, right? Everything. And you have a little, what is that little thing you're holding there in your lap? Whoa! That's a cat. That's a handsome cat. And you remember when you got it? You remember the story. You remember the very day. Did you remember how you felt? Your heart feels story. You might hear a word, but did you know that words are attached to the heart? Did you know that? Yeah. To the brain. Well, to the brain too, of course, the brain has a lot to do with the heart, right? So, tells the heart what to do, maybe? Yeah. Tells you to get, like when you're really scared, you might have a real scary story. And what happens then to the heart? 
What does the heart say? It goes boom, 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 right? And what happens to your breathing? <gasps> no, sometimes when you're really scared, you go, <gasps> and you don't breathe. Oh, let go. <sighs> so I'm going to tell you a story, and I'm so happy to tell you this story, especially today, because I thought I would never get here. You know what? Children, older children, if you make a promise, you must keep your promise, no matter what happens, okay? Traffic, rain, snow, bad weather, bad people stopping you in traffic, whatever. You must keep your promise. So this is a promise. This is a story. Everybody has to know. I, did I tell you? How many ears do you have? Two. Is that all you have? How many ears do you have, little guy? How many ears do you have? Two. Is that all you have? What is the most important ear? I should tell you, well, you have three ears. You know the most important ear? Heart. It's a little ear in your heart. It's on the left side. Point over here. On the other side. You see where your big button is there? That's where, and you got the Ottawa storytelling button right over your heart. That's too cool. That's very nice. So, all of us have two ears on the side of our head, but we have a little ear in here. And what does the little ear hear in the story? Yes? You're the audience, but the ear in the heart hears things that make the heart feel. And I'm talking about things like, sometimes if you hear a story, you feel sad. Sometimes you hear a story, you feel happy. Sometimes you hear a story, oh, you're scared. And then sometimes in a story, you have a big question mark above your head. You say, what in the world was that about? Yeah, even adults, when they hear stories, they say, what the heck was that about? So that's the, the head, the heart, all together. But a story touches all of those little things. Yeah, and a story is something, is something very special. I, I look at it as an indigenous storyteller. I look at story as being sacred. Life is sacred. Every one of us are breathing, walking, interacting with other people. We are alive. And because we're alive, that's a sacred thing. So this is the story. Everybody going to stay still? Because if you're not going to stay still, I'm going to make you sit right up here and help me. Can you stay still here? Yes. Yes. Be my helper. Be my helper. Sit. Oh. I love it. I love it when you're right here. Just sit right here on the floor. Get comfortable. Sit I'm not sitting. Sit down. Sit down and look over here so you can help me. You have to look at me, okay? That you don't know how powerful you are. To a storyteller, you're very powerful. Every person in the first two rows as a storyteller sits in a huge hall, but the first two rows of people, they're looking at you, they're helping you. Did you know that you're helpers to the storyteller? I was a, I'm helping. Thank you. And how about you? Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. These I'm four, you are very important people to storytell. Okay, you ready to listen with how many ears? Three. Three ears. Two on the side of our head, one here in our heart. Years ago, there was a couple, a young couple, who were living in the high north. And this couple, so wanted a child. They wanted a baby. Don't put your hand up. Don't, you have to wait till the end of the story because you're my helper, right? You're helping me tell the story. All four of you are helping me, okay? So this couple really wanted a baby, but for some reason they couldn't have a child. They felt really bad. They went to this very powerful healer in their little village and she couldn't help them. They felt very sad. And when they would hear a baby cry, that would make their sadness 
come to them again. So years passed, and one day, and they lived a little outside of the, the little group of people, the little band of people, they lived outside. Why? Because they, it broke her heart to hear a baby cry. So they moved a little bit outside of the little camp. So they didn't have to hear that. And one day, the woman was out and she was catching birds. You know, like the former storyteller here was talking about animals and animals feed people and all of this. Well, she was snaring little tiny ptarmigan. They're about as big as a chicken. A big ptarmigan would be about as big as a chicken. This guy is really trying very hard to be still and he's doing good. Thank you. Now, she was going around setting snares and she was catching birds. And she thought to herself, Did, am I hearing things? When she got over to this certain area where she had set a snare, she thought she heard a baby crying. Is it the wind? It, what is it? Is it these little, small, little trees here? And she went close, and you know what she found? You can't believe it. No. There was a baby. There was a baby. And the baby had just gotten born. It even had its long umbilical cord attached to the tree. She couldn't believe it. So she took her little tiny little knife off of her belt, which women used to use in the old days, and she cut the umbilical cord. It was the little baby boy. And she put that little boy under her park. She gave thanks. Oh my goodness, this has been her wish. This has been her longing. And she went home and her husband was delighted. Her husband couldn't believe it, that they now had a baby boy. Well, I have to, I have to speed up the story because we're supposed to get out of here at a certain time. So she took the baby home under her parka and because she hadn't given birth to this baby, she knew that it would take a while for her to make milk so she could feed the baby from her breast. So she made some soup, and she made this little tiny little cloth, and she fed the baby some caribou soup. So that's how the baby could stay alive while the milk was coming in. Now this amazing thing was happening. Every night, it would seem around the same time, this little guy would start crying. The little baby. And they made little fur pants for him, so they called him Thukthul, our little baby Thukthul. And Thukthul would start crying, and Mommy would try to uh, comfort him, and then Daddy. And then just intuitively, this mother knew what to do. She went over to the tent, she opened up the door, and there it was. The mother, the moon, was full. And as soon as the baby saw the moon, stop crying. So every night when the There's baby would get cranky, she would take them. She would take the baby there. She said, Tujri, Tujri means moon. There's your moon. And she talked to her husband one night and she said, you know, I think this is the moon spirit. I think our little child come from the moon. Yeah, he said. So they took very good care of that child. They made sure that he was always well kept, protected, because he's from the moon. Now, I should tell you, sometimes animals, wild animals, they change their pattern. And this year, the caribou went in a different direction. And that all the people were waiting there for the, all the migration of the caribou to come through. It's like a grocery store for them. You know, they're all coming through and they hunt the caribou. They, they run them into these big corrals that they made. They didn't come. <gasps> people were starving. Ooh, you can imagine not having any food for days. <gasps> people were boiling the old bones and trying to make soup and trying to stay alive. Yeah, so yeah. So you know what happened? That little boy, what's his name? Thukthul. Can you say it? Thukthul. Thukthul. Yes, because he's got little he's fur pants. Baby. They called him Thukthul. 
He said, Mama, I can make caribou come back. What? I think I can try, he said. He was about maybe five or six, about your size, maybe a little bit bigger. He said, I'm going to sing a song and bring the caribou back so that the people can eat again. Smart little boy, huh? Yep, that's so me. He went out, it's you. So he went outside. That's they me. have a dome-shaped tent like this. It's round. And he went outside, and he took, found a couple little sticks there, and this is what he did. He was clacking those sticks like this because that's the sound that the caribou antlers, when they're moving across the land, their antlers touch each other and it goes click, 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 like this. And he sang this song for a long time. Then he looked over there on the hillside. The chief of the caribou was there, standing there. He's looking out to see where his people are going to go because he's a chief. Imagine that. So pretty soon all the caribou are starting to move. And the fathers and the mother said to the little boy, who told the, they told the people, all our son wants for bringing the caribou back is the stomach fat. This is the fat that encircles us, the inside of the caribou. That's what we want for him. So you bring that back. That is so everybody went down. They got a lot of caribou. They put them into the great big corral like this, huge, made with trees. Chased them all in there. And they used their bows and their arrows and their spears and clubs. And they <laughs> had a great big pile of caribou there. And the mother and the little boy were waiting. Did anybody bring the fat? No. No. And Thuk Thul said, what kind of people I live with all these years? And I thought I could, these people were trustworthy, my people here on earth. They don't keep their promise. And his mother said, just wait, son. They're going to bring it. They're busy. They're cutting meat. Mm, he goes like this. Mm. And they waited till late afternoon. And he said, and the wait lit. Tejru, and the wait lit. Tejru, I'm going back to the moon. I don't want to live amongst people that are not trustworthy, people that don't keep their promise. Oh no, son, wait, wait. But he was convinced that's what he had to do. Go back to his people, moon people. You know how, how the moon keeps its promise. It comes out every night. It keeps its promise to go from small to large. It comes out every night. So that couple, they wanted to keep their little one with them. So that night, you know what they did? Listen. Do you know what they did that night? Listen now, because you have to tell the story to another friend. Because they didn't want him to go back to the moon. They put him in bed with them, between the two of them. Didn't work. When they woke in the morning, there's a little smoke hole on top of their little tent like this, and the little fur pants is hanging there. Thuk Thul's pants. He went back to the moon. Now, at this time of the year, this last full moon is called the beaver moon. That's what comes in November. That moon still directs the caribou from Alaska to the Yukon. The caribou, they summer in Alaska, and then they come back to the Yukon in the winter. And that full moon is when they start moving. And right now, they're coming home from Alaska to the Yukon. And that's the story. And you guys are good listeners. Thank you.